British roads are amongst the most crowded in Europe. There are currently around 25 million cars, with numbers believed to be increasing by over half a million each year. Roads are a leading source of mortality for wildlife too, with badgers one of the most obvious casualties. Recent data suggests that as many as 50,000 badgers are killed as a result of collisions with traffic every year. But roads also cause more subtle problems too. They can seriously fragment badgers' territories and home ranges, creating impassable barriers between where they live and where they feed. Badgers have been a British fixture for over 10,000 years. But since industrialisation, their once thriving population has had to cope with an ever-changing landscape. In modern Britain, road traffic incidents are now their single biggest threat, calling into question the future of this iconic mammal. Badgers have an incredible sense of smell, which is their most important sense for recognising members of their family, communication and even finding their way around. By comparison, their eyesight is relatively poor, making these nocturnal creatures of habit particularly vulnerable when crossing our roads. Out and about at night, badgers spend the day underground in structures like this called sets. They're basically an underground city of tunnels and exit holes and entrances. And looking around, I have to say, this is the largest set that I have ever seen. I've counted at least 40 holes like this. So obviously, there are good numbers of badgers under my feet as we speak. And just looking around, it's really active here. And it looks like the badgers have been doing a bit of spring cleaning in amongst the bluebells. These paths here have been created by badgers that have probably followed these very same routes between the set behind and foraging areas for generations. Badgers have the most amazing sense of smell and they'll mark the roots with their scent, making them effectively vapour trails. Now these roots will wind their way across town and country, making them a nightly danger for badgers following these routes that happened across a busy road. Road traffic accidents involving badgers in the southwest of England are thought to be amongst the highest in the country. So we've come to Secret World Rescue Centre near Bridgewater to find out more. So Pauline, at Secret World, how often do you see badgers coming in as a result of problems on roads? We get about 70 to 80 on average throughout the year, but just road accidents would be between 30 and 40. I'd imagine as well that's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, because obviously a lot of badgers that we pick up that are badly injured, they would go straight to the vets and we would have no records of those. So if a badger comes in, are you able to turn it around? Sometimes, it really depends where they've been knocked. Um, if it's not too bad, if it's, it's very often they can get away with head trauma because of the sagittal crest, which means that the skull is so strong. And Thick right. skulls. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so if it's a glancing blow, then we've got a chance of getting them better and putting them back. How do they take to being in captivity? They're amazing. They're really super animals to look after. They just stick their nose between their paws, <laughs> curl up in a ball, enjoy the heat and the free food, and just heal themselves. This campaign is all about seeing less casualties on the roads. What advice would you give? Really what we need to do is to take actions when there's new roads being built and, and get those tunnels so that we can go underneath the roads rather than over the roads. Because it's not just the badgers, it's the people themselves that get caught up in these accidents as well that suffer. And certainly foot off the throttle. Yeah, and that's where I think signs come in because I think if you do see a sign, it's a mental thing of, you know, yes, those animals are around and we should be taking uh, our foot off the pedal and not going quite so fast. Time to go and meet some orphaned badger cubs. 
Now, Pauline, I know you don't like to handle the badges for too long, but no. this is a treat, isn't it? <laughs> Who's this? This one is Starlight, and uh, we'll probably hear a little bit from the other two because he's uh, not in with them, and they think it's feeding time. It's just lovely for people to see because they're such an animal that's maligned, and, and, and you know people think they're horrible, and really they're, they're the nearest thing we've got to bears. And you can see that lovely black and white face and that lovely grey uh, pelage or fur. They're, they're just like mini adults, aren't they? They are. And even at this stage, they've got those beautiful long claws, which they're going to use for digging um, later on in life. Fantastic, like spades. For digging out the worms. Do you want to put him back? I'll put him back if that's OK. You can see how unsteady they are because yeah. they're just not ready, even at this age, even though they're eight to ten weeks old, they're not old enough to be up above ground. They're a very slow maturing animal. Is it conceivable they could have lost the, the sow their mother or the boar their father and as a result been hungry and been forced above ground? Yeah, it's the sow that's the one that's missing. How long will you have this before you try to rehabilitate them? These will go through a stage of weaning. Then they go into inside pens where that's hands off, basically. We don't want them to be used to human beings. They're all going to be tested for TB three times. And if they've gone all through that testing regime, they then go out to grassed enclosures. And they'll be with us until about September, October time. I don't want to age you, Pauline, but I know you've been doing this for a very long time. Any idea how many badges you've seen through the process? About a thousand now. Well, very good to hear. And hopefully, after these three are rehabilitated, 1,003. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you very much. What we do with most adult animals that come in, because they're with us for a relatively short period of time, they can just be released back to where they were found. They will know where they are. They'll go back to the same social group. With orphans, it's a bit more complicated. Obviously, they're with us for a much longer period of time. What we will generally do is create an artificial set, which we will release them into. Um, and that will be fenced off at the release site for the initial couple of weeks. If there is an existing badger population in the area, it can give them the opportunity to sort of get used to each other's smells through the fence and they're more likely to be accepted and there's less likely to be sort of conflict between the groups when they are fully released. With thousands of animals being killed on British roads each year, it's essential we incorporate strategies to reduce wildlife mortality in new developments through a process called mitigation. The Highways Agency is now increasingly constructing underpasses in places where wildlife is thought to be at high risk. But this also needs to be combined with fencing in order to direct the animals towards the tunnels to ensure they don't just end up becoming another statistic. We met up with the local badger group in Somerset to find out more. The road builders and the house builders uh, have proper surveys done on the land that they're proposing to work. But equally importantly is that they contact the local badger group they'd be able to point out the routes that badgers take currently and perhaps that will facilitate the routing of roads to minimise the likely contact between uh, traffic and badgers. So what can you do to help reduce the number of animal casualties on the road? Number one, slow down. Animals can appear in front of your car very quickly at any time of the day or night, particularly dangerous periods at dawn and dusk, and certainly for badgers, March to May and September to November are periods when animals are much more busy. Number two, report. The Badger Trust would like you to send details to their website of where and when you see badger casualties on the road. With that incredibly valuable data, they can then use that to lobby government to help mitigate for measures for protecting wildlife. And finally, number three, raise awareness. Please follow our campaign, share our messages, and like us on social media. With your support, we can keep Great Britain's countryside great and also a safer place for wildlife.